Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Bungani. I want to thank you for joining us today on the show. As always, right here on Red Carpet, we bring you the latest in entertainment news, in sports, in fashion, in film and television from around the world. Let's get on with the show. The English Premier League is underway and Egyptian forward Mohamed Salah picked up where he left off last season with a goal and two assists in Liverpool's 3-0 victory over Norwich. Salah is the first player to score on five consecutive Premier League opening match days. anglo Ionian Trevor Chalobala helped his team Chelsea beat Crystal Palace 3-0. And Nigerian Emmanuel Dennis celebrated his league debut with Watford by scoring the opening goal against Aston Villa. Arsenal fans are not alone in their disappointment at the North London's team woeful start. Rwandan president Paul Kagame, whose country's tourism board is the club sponsor, took to Twitter to share his frustration with the loss to Brentford. He said, quote, the game itself aside, Arsenal and the fans don't deserve to kind of get used to this. No, he tweeted, the change has taken too long to come. And turning to music, Wizkid is remixing his 2020 hit Essence and listing Justin Bieber to join him on the track. Bieber tweeted his appreciation to the Nigerian star, writing, thank you for letting me jump on the song of the summer. Essence, which also features singer Thames, is on Wizkid's album, Made in Lagos. In Ivory Coast, there is more consumer waste becoming masterpieces as one artist is reusing discarded flip-flops. Take a look. When painter Aristide Kwame comes the beach, dragging a trash bag of waterlogged flip-flops, he knows most other beachgoers think him either a desperate trader or a madman. Little do they know that when Kome collects rubber scraps that they have washed up along Abidjan's coast, he takes them home, casts them into pieces, and plasters them across the canvas valued at nearly $1,000. This is waste that men dumped into the sea, and the sea brings it back to us because she doesn't want it. The environment doesn't want the negative things that man gives away, so the sea brings everything back to us. Sitting on the floor of a narrow alley, the 26-year-old carves shapes, letters and faces into the rubber soles. He tells Reuters that he makes his own paint by grinding what scraps remain into piles of Technicolor pigment. When I go pick up, there are a lot of questions, such as, what will I do with all of this? Will you sell the flip-flops? I simply respond that I am an artist, and by picking up this waste, I am removing this burden on nature. I'm removing something that disturbs the beach because I don't like to see it dirty. Kwame's works range from large portraits of civil rights leaders to abstracts evoking societal ills like climate change, COVID-19, and wealth inequality. All are made from old shoes he found floating in the ocean. His most recent work represents a woman and a child wearing masks and words made with engraved flip-flops that say COVID and confinement. This work is about COVID-19, because that's what dominates the news these days. As an artist, I consider myself a witness of my time. That's why I produce this work, not only to show that this is a dangerous disease, but also to be in an additional push in the fight against this disease. Over a short career, Kome has blossomed into one of Ivory Coast's more original and provocative working artists. His unique methods have garnered wide acclaim and his art has hung in galleries throughout West Africa and parts of Europe. In the United States, Suzanne Furstenberg describes herself as a social issues artist who finds inspiration in economic inequality, racism and climate change. She doesn't limit herself to any particular medium but instead uses whatever she thinks works best to draw attention to the most pressing issues of our time. Viewers, Maxim Maskalkov talked to the artist about her works and inspiration. 
I went to 24 different states, and I interviewed people who were suffering or recovering from drug addiction because I wanted to understand what it was all about. And so I went to homeless shelters, soup kitchens. What I do is I place these glass blocks in water fountains or reflecting ponds so that they'll be looking up from the water at people. And the reason to, I do this is because we'll walk right past someone who's on the street, slumped over from addiction, and we'll give them wide berth. But we're socialized to never walk past someone who's drowning. Susan Fürstenberg says she's a social issues artist who wants to draw attention to the present problems facing America. It took decades for the 61-year-old from South Dakota to discover the power of art. After working in the pharmaceutical industry and on Capitol Hill, life changed when she was in her 50s and attended a ceramics class with her son. They made great bowls and platters and all sorts of things. I couldn't center my clay. And so I asked the instructor if I could just take a lump of clay and go sit off on another table and just try to make something. And I ended up with a sculpture, a sculpture of a woman of indeterminate ethnicity who looked like she had something to say. The one thing she told me That's when Fürstenberg realized her true calling was art. She tried many mediums, from sketching to ice carvings to mosaics. But she did not settle on one. Instead, she chose to use whichever medium worked best to highlight a particular issue. One piece focuses on mass shootings in the U.S. The U.S. flag is covered with names of killed in mass shootings starting in 1999. Behind the flag sits the U.S. Declaration of Independence, with its well-known phrase about the right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Alcohol and drug addiction are a recurring theme in Furstenberg's work along with other complex issues. Over and over again, what people told me, they recounted stories of sexual abuse, emotional abuse, neglect, isolation, bullying, loneliness, all these issues that are really psychological injury. One of her best known works is an installation honoring those lost to COVID-19 in America. You know, a lot of artists, they, um, their work is very personal and introspective and um, to watch her project that she did on the mall, I mean, on the, um, um, at the DC Armory um, um, was really amazing because her, her ability to empathize. It helped people understand the immensity of our loss. It alerted them to the fact that this didn't need to happen. It took the individual life, and it made it matter. Next, Fürstenberg says she will focus on white supremacy and economic inequality. Gambian artist Aliu Saho arrived in Italy in 2017 after a risky journey crossing the Mediterranean Sea. Four years later, he is again on a boat, but this time using it as a floating stage entertaining Italians with music using his traditional African chora instrument. Here is more on Sao's story by Reuters. Playing his 21 chora in a wooden boat with a fitted speaker in central Italy, Saho was taking part in a Lakeside Town's Blues Festival, where musicians play on borrowed fishing boats on Lake Tresmano. The Umbria Festival was moved from land to water last year, as part of efforts to reduce the spread of coronavirus. This instrument is called Kora. I started playing it when I was five, six years old with my father. We played at many festivals together in the Gambia, but also in Senegal and Mali. I wanted to take my music all over the world to places I don't know yet and to let the world know what the Kora is. That's why I made a long journey from the Gambia to here. Performing on a board had an extra special meaning for Saho, who four years ago, like many thousands of migrants, crossed the Mediterranean Sea from his native country to Europe. 
I remember when I was on board the boat to come here. It's a powerful memory and a powerful feeling. Now living in Rome, Sao has earned the nickname Cora Hero after showing off his skills at different festivals all over Italy. Known for his extraordinary eye-catching colorful images, Vincent van Gogh is one of the world's most famous painters and now large-scale copies of his artwork can be viewed through digital technology at two exhibits traveling around the world. VOS Deborah Block takes us to one of them here in Washington. Van Gogh, the immersive experience, wows visitors in 360 degrees, displaying and moving images using cutting edge 3D video mapping technology. Mario Yacampo is the president and creative director for the exhibition. We take the, the art, we digitally remaster it, uh, and then we animate the individual elements within the art, but always respecting the content of the art and never really introducing new things to the art. Visitor Christina McGee finds it exhilarating to listen to the music while the images flow into each other. What was really different was it was on the floor too, so it was really like you were inside the painting. Digital projections showcase paintings made into large-scale images that include Van Gogh's favorite subjects, including flowers, landscapes, and even self-portraits. He's a rock star. He wasn't really copying anyone, and he didn't really start a movement. You know, he, he created his own art over a very short period of time in his own style. Today, Van Gogh's paintings are worth millions of dollars. During his lifetime, however, he wasn't considered a great artist and sold only a couple of paintings for little money. He wasn't seen as important by his peers. You know, he was really an outcast. Uh, his style didn't fit with, with, with what was going on during that era. Van Gogh was poor and led a turbulent life. He suffered from mental illness and is famously known for cutting off his ear. He became passionate about painting when he was 28 and was a prolific artist until he died at 37 from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He painted over 900 paintings in, in nine years, which is, a, is an incredible amount of paintings, and over 1,100 drawings, uh, sketches. Surprisingly, Van Gogh was slightly colorblind. And so he didn't see all the colors like we do. And, and, the th and people theorized that that's why you get these rich colors is because when he saw yellow, and he was painting orange. When he saw the blues, he saw the blues very lively. He wasn't seeing the different degradations of blues. Including well-known paintings like Starry Night and his series on sunflowers. You can see they, they're, they're drying over a period of days and he's painting them every day uh, because that's all he had at his disposal. Visitor Anthony Tagliaferro says the artwork brings back fond memories of his mother who loved Van Gogh's paintings. Right before she got sick and passed away she painted a lot of sunflowers. It was one of her favorite things and there's a, there's a couple um, examples in the first part of the gallery that like I, I saw him and just just cried. Another visitor Mike Tasto is enjoying looking at Van Gogh's paintings in a new way. You can really see the movement coming right out of like the lines and shapes. Yacampo says the exhibition is a virtual museum that pays homage to Van Gogh, whose paintings were not displayed during his lifetime. What I'd like people to feel is that they know a little bit about, uh, more about the artist, and maybe they'll go home and go to a museum and see real art, see the real paintings. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. I want to thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voanews.com. We are also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. We'll catch you next time. Goodbye, everyone.